The people and places in the Hoosier State are special, and that's why we're dedicated to showcasing the unique and inspiring stories found only in Indiana, including Charlie the Bird, who rides rather than flies. Led to riding about, I don't know, at least a thousand miles or more with him. It just seems a very natural thing for him, and he's never refused. <laughs> In the next hour, you'll meet the duo who become celebrities in Bloomington. And four-year-old Ava's immune system couldn't tolerate a dog or a cat, but a miniature pig brought a smile to her face. Plus, see, look at the smile. <laughs> Have you ever experienced anything like you've just experienced? No. A retired music teacher shares the power of music with a seven-year-old who is deaf and blind. The only in Indiana special shows you how the feel of an instrument brought a smile to his face. This is an Eyewitness News special, only in Indiana, with Kevin Rayner. We begin with a legend from Bloomington, and he never played basketball. But he does a lot of other things, and that is what has endeared him to the entire city. Photographer John Whalen and I show you what it's like to go riding with Charlie. It is said you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but what about a 56-year-old man? That is how old Joseph Porowski was when he had to change his stripes. You get the phone. Hello. He didn't pick Charlie. You see, Charlie picked him. <laughs> his owner died eight years ago after 23 years together. So there were a few foster homes, but nothing stuck until Charlie met JoJo. So I tell people it's like having a three-year-old child for a hundred years. Now the two are inseparable. Not because JoJo wants it that way, but because Charlie does. Probably the longest I can leave him is two hours by himself. Or I've adapted to taking him anywhere that I can. That meant JoJo had to start looking at things differently. That led to building a perch and putting it on the bike. Okay, you go for a bike ride? So this unlikely pair, the macaw who chooses not to fly and the retired dog lover who chooses not to leave him, started living life. It's led to riding about, I don't know, at least a thousand miles or more with him. It just seems a very natural thing for him, and he's never refused. <laughs> Does he like riding on the bike? He loves it. He loves, What's we go name? paddle boarding, Charlie. Charlie. Now Charlie's become quite a celebrity about town in Bloomington. He's lived in Bloomington longer than I have. Yeah, he's, he's a fixture. Yeah, him and his man, yeah. And by the way, you heard that right. Charlie also likes to paddleboard. But the thing he seems to like the most... Hello. Hello. ...is chumming for the camera. Hi. Oh, you See what are, I mean about a camera? You are liking this. <laughs> Pretty bird. He knows exactly. That you're taking pictures of him. It's a good thing he never gets tired of it because wherever these two go, a camera is sure to find them. He has a limited vocabulary. Hello, pretty bird, and believe it or not, I love you. Although JoJo says he hasn't heard that a lot lately. Well, like I said, lots of people know this parrot and don't know me. He has become a, a celebrity, and the people tend to call me a celebrity, and I go, I'm just a guy who hauls him around and cleans up after him. I am no celebrity, but the attention that you get is somewhat celebrity-like. And they have the pictures to prove it, but those are for JoJo. Charlie, and he just wants to scale the mountaintop. <laughs> and then bask in the accomplishment. I know what you're all thinking. A bird on a bike. Really thank you, ver everybody. thank you very much. What's next, a bunny with a fiddle? What do you think, huh? It's supposed to dance, Charlie. Well, only in Bloomington. And only in Indiana. Well, Charlie has flown the coop from Bloomington here to join us in Indianapolis. He's here with JoJo Porowski, who, do I dare say you're the handler? What, what, what's, what's our relationship here, JoJo? Uh, a handler is a good word. Handler, cleanup person. <laughs> Tell me about him. How has he been since the story aired? I know he was popular before, but... Oh, I think he's become even more popular. Lots of people have come up to us telling us that they've seen the story. More and more people have gotten to meet him. Tell me a little bit about, because I know we saw the paddle boarding, we saw the bike. What all does Charlie do with you? I mean, he really gets out. You guys spend all day out. We spend most of the time outdoors when we can, when it's decent weather. 
either uh, visiting people, you know, recreation, riding, going to work, going to run errands. Basically, he comes along. People must be shocked when they see you pedaling down the road like we see behind you here with him on the back of the bike. Whether it's in a truck or on the bike or walking on my, sho or on my shoulder, yes. It, it's, people aren't expected to turn around and see a big parrot looking at them. And you, it, it, you were telling me earlier, even some of the IU basketball team have been seeing him lately. You, they, everybody likes him down there. Everybody likes him. Everybody wants a picture with him. Colin Hartman's got him dancing on his arms. To which you warned him, said, ah, it may uh, not be a good idea. May not, but he didn't seem to be phased by it at all. Now, Charlie is a macaw, and he's, so tell me this. He's going to outlive both of us, isn't he? He's going to outlive both of us. His natural life is 80 to 100 years. He's 35 years old now, and I'm always looking for somebody who wants to take an interest in him when I'm gone. For the next generation. <laughs> yeah. Tell me how this came about again, JoJo. It's kind of a special relationship. You, if somebody else had him and it wasn't working out? Someone else had him, reluctantly tried to rescue him when his owner had died. And it uh, didn't work out with the two of them, so I took him. And I've learned a lot about parrots since. Yeah, and you were telling me once when we did the story, people don't realize how much, how involved it is to have a macaw. I mean, you look at it and think, oh, it would be wonderful to have a bird. It's a full-time job. It's absolutely a full-time job. And it's like having a three-year-old child for 100 years. And anybody who's raised kids knows exactly what that means. <laughs> All right. Well, Charlie, thank you for coming in today. I know you had a drive from Bloomington, but JoJo, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. And thank thanks you. for sharing your story. It was wonderful. We have all heard at one time or another about a moment where a light bulb turned on for a child. We're about to share just such a moment that took place at McKellen Elementary in Wayne Township. He's deaf and blind. Photographer Steve Rhodes and I caught up with seven-year-old Elias as he was about to discover the joy of music for the very first time. We call this story, The Awakening. If you've never met someone perfectly attuned with who they are, what you have now. I always do that for the kids. Music is just all. Jim Chrismore. Everything. Artist. It's art, but it's also history, but it's also math. Middle C is right. Teacher. Right here. Shepherd of his own musical instrument petting zoo. That's what I do. I help children figure out what instrument speaks to them the best. He has lived a lyrical life. Yeah, I am passionate about music. Following a path that is clearly denoted in black and white. But not everyone's path is so clearly defined. I do wonder all the time, like, how does it feel to be like how he is? Imagine. I couldn't imagine how he feels. If his mother doesn't know how seven-year-old Elias Valentin Wilson feels, then who does? You can't ever know that because he's never known vision and he's never known hearing. Born deaf and blind, he's searching for his path in this life. He's just dealing with what he's, what he's got. Every step. What he's been given. Every day, in darkness and silence. And just listen to how it resonates. Two people on two very different paths. I'm gonna go into music. And it can all change <laughs> in one moment. Let's put this in with him right here. Oh, oh boy. Oh, do we like this? It was like, I was so excited. Uh-huh, okay. I don't, I can't explain it. On this day, the cello did the speaking. The student couldn't even hear it. But he could feel it. He was feeling it with his chin and with his ears and with his body. Then he starts feeling around here. Oh, I wonder what this will do. <laughs> I mean, I never pictured my son playing. Uh, well, oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're learning. Like, I never thought he would do it. See, look at the smile. <laughs> Have you ever experienced anything like you've just experienced? No. 
What was that like? Well, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, he was actually reaching to hug mm -hmm. the instrument. I mean, does that show the power of music? Oh, I didn't think. Give me a minute. Jim Chris Moore has witnessed many moments over his 30 year career of teaching music, but this is much more than science and art. No, this was an awakening. Feeling the music? It could last a lifetime. It's a child with no vision, limited if any hearing, who is experiencing the power of music. Now, how cool is that? <laughs> we finished with music, Spanish. The cello was donated for the school for Elias to use after a benefactor heard of his story and wanted to make sure that he had his own instrument. It's just what Hoosiers do. And it was a birthday celebration to remember for the oldest state employee in Indiana history. We were there when co-workers threw a party for Bob Vollmer's 100th birthday. He started the DNR when JFK was inaugurated. He still works the field, surveying the state four days a week. Vollmer was recently honored by the governor with a Sagamore of the Wabash, and the DNR dedicated a plaque to him in Brown County State Park as well. Live long and prosper, Bob. And a touching story about a tough topic. We got a huge response from our story about rocks for Ryland. Next, meet the 12-year-old who inspired painted messages and new conversations. Plus, I don't want for generations down the road my great-grandbaby say, what's a monarch? It's known as the king of the butterflies, but lately the population of the beautiful monarch butterfly has started to dwindle. Also ahead, a Marian woman's call to give Mother Nature a helping hand.